Is this still America? Is this government so drunk on power that it would turn its full force, its full might, to harass and intimidate and threaten uh, an average American who only wants uh, her voice and their voices heard? Mr. Miller, who in the IRS is responsible for targeting conservative organizations? That was some world-class umbrage taking by Republican Congressman Kevin Brady of Texas while he was grilling the soon-to-be former IRS Chief Stephen Miller. And you probably have a similar thought as I did watching that. Relax, buddy. And in fact, you've probably been feeling that way all week, as what we in the office have taken to calling Scandalgate has unfolded between the ridiculous Benghazi talking points and the worrisome but ultimately what appears to be bureaucratic failure at the IRS. As a liberal, it's easy to get your dander up and say, hey, guys, back off. These are not scandals. But there's another one I think we should talk about. And liberals, hear me out. Because, in fact, you know what? Come a little closer. There we go. I understand reflexively doubting the braying of the Washington media complex of pundits on cable news, of politicians grandstanding about scandals, particularly in this kind of scandal season when a lot of scandals are wholly invented. We cannot let that blind us to what the stakes are in another really troublesome episode. What the Justice of the Department of Justice did when it seized two months of phone records for all phone calls from more than 20 different Associated Press phone lines. And I want to take just a second to explain why this matters and why it's a big deal and why it's outrageous what the DOJ did. In March of 2006, the Associated Press reported on a confidential videotape showing federal officials warning President Bush and his Homeland Security chief before Hurricane Katrina struck that the storm could breach New Orleans levees. In 2005, an AP investigation found top lobbyist Jack Abramoff appealed to some three dozen members of Congress to write to Interior Secretary Gail Norton, urging her to block an Indian casino in Louisiana that threatened other casino tribes that had hired Abramoff. In 2010, the AP, in an exclusive, found that to keep its detention program secret, the CIA in 2003 whisked 9-11 figures out of Gitmo prior to a court ruling. Those are just a few stories about Bush-era malfeasance or incompetence. Stories that were brought to you by the Associated Press. And those stories happened because people took a chance. People that identified wrongdoing, people that found a secret that shouldn't be a secret, and believed that we should know about it. Those people spoke to a reporter with the trust that their secrets could be protected and they wouldn't face humiliation and recrimination. Think of every source that every AP reporter has right now and whether they're going to trust the AP again. Think of someone right now who might be sitting on an army base who knows about a serial sexual predator at a high level who wants to blow the whistle and is terrified reading the news that their call logs are in the hands of the same government that they want to blow the whistle on. That's the chilling effect of what the DOJ has done to the AP. Not just the AP. The chilling effect on every single possible news source, as well as reporters themselves. Barack Obama is not going to be president forever. And after him, there will be others. It is a core function of democracy in the First Amendment. We have an oppositional press that is trying to find out things the government does not want to know. And we cannot let the government use its power to destroy the press's ability to do that. Now, over the past week on Twitter and Facebook, when I've said something like this, I've seen a fair number of liberals and Democrats come to the Department of Justice's defense and and saying basically what Eric Holder and President Obama have said about this leak. It put the American people at risk, and that is not hyperbole. It put the American people at risk. Leaks related to national security can put people at risk. But it's important to remember this is always what presidents and officials say about leaks to journalists, some less eloquently than others. But I want to tell you something. Leaks of classified information are are, 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 are bad things. We can't just take these assertions at face value because we have no independent way to know what degree, to what degree they are true in each specific instance. In fact, that's the whole problem. We need the press to tell us stuff government doesn't want us to know. And if it's hounded out of the business, then the only things we'll learn about the massive, ever-expanding secret government are things that make that government look good. Obtaining a massive trove of phone records from a journalistic outfit is more than just a one-off happenstance. 
It is part of a worrying trend, and it constitutes a terrifying precedent for future administrations. While you're watching this unfold, take a moment to ask yourself honestly how you'd feel if George W. Bush was the one doing it. We'll be right back with Click 3.